Six months ago, the Oakland Athletics shocked the baseball world, snatching the division title on the final day of the regular season, making 2012 a year to remember. But that was then and this is now. 2013 is in the green and gold sights. Their improved lineup, versatility, strong rotation, and powerful bullpen make them a team to beat in the American League. Today, the A's return home for a final tune-up as they are hopeful to embark on yet another unforgettable season. It's the A's and the Giants next. It is a beautiful day for baseball in the East Bay, and we are all thrilled to be back home at the O.Co. Coliseum, the final tune-up of this exhibition season for the Athletics and the Giants. And then a day off tomorrow and baseball on Monday. But we'll wrap it up today. Giants A's coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California. Good evening, ever make it good afternoon, everybody. I'm Glenn Kuyper, along with Ray Fossey. Welcome to Oakland A's baseball. I was thinking about Monday night, That's but right. it's a day yeah. game here. So Dan Straley's <laughs> going to make the uh, start today, and Ray, he's going to pitch the fifth game of the year, which will be Friday in Houston. Now, what happens after that? Probably going to go back to the minor leagues, but nonetheless, he's going to get himself ready today. You know, Cup, he got a taste of the big leagues last year, and I thought he did well. He had a little bit of a tired arm when he came up, but he improved as the season progressed. He really has not had a great spring, and one of the reasons is he's gotten the two outs, but then all of a sudden he starts putting guys on base and gets in trouble. So Bob Melvin would like to see him get the third out quickly. Few pitches get back in the dugout. He is going to be in the big leagues for a long time. It's just a matter of how soon it's going to be. Now following Straley will be Bartolo Colon. Mm -hmm. Best case scenario for these, those two guys would finish the nine innings today. We'll see if that happens. One guy who's been red hot really from day one of spring training, Eric Sogart. Not official yet, but he has played himself onto this team. The magic wand, and you see the home run in Scottsdale. Just a nice easy Easy swing from Eric Sogard. He's doing everything. The home run. And oh, how about a safety squeeze? This happened over in San Francisco scoring Josh Donaldson. And his defense has been spectacular. Great angle going after this ball in the outfield. And you're right, Kai. It's a matter as he's playing so well. And with the injuries, a couple of injuries, he gets the opportunity probably to keep that hot bat against King Felix on Monday night. So the goal for both teams, play nine innings and get out healthy. <laughs> and let's hope that is the case <laughs> for both these teams. Bay Area battle. It's the A's. And it's the Giants coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California. We'll have lineups and first pitch from the Coliseum when we come back.
as we speak, the A's take the field wearing the green tops for the final exhibition game for this 2013 season, 33rd and final exhibition game. Sounds like a lot, doesn't it? 33 exhibition games. It is a lot. It was a lot. It's still a lot. And the best one is the last one. That's right. So. so we'll see how long the regulars go today for both these teams. But this is the starting lineup for the visiting San Francisco Giants. Most of their regulars in there, at least in the early going. Pagan, Scudero, Pence, Posey will DH. Belt, Crawford, Blanco, Arias. And the catcher is Guillermo Quiros. Well, it's been detailed about Dan Straley. Did a very good job for the A's last year. Seven starts. He was two and one, but uh, as mentioned, our open, a little bit of a tired arm, but got through that, ended up pitching well, and not had a particularly great spring, but he knows he needs to work on a few things. He'll probably try to do that today. He will be making the fifth start for the A's. That will come against the Astros in the first round of starts by the A's players. Here's the A's defense today. Seth Smith is going to play left field with Coco Crisp in center and Josh Reddick in right. Donaldson, Lowry, Sogard, Moss. Third to first with John Jaso doing the catching. Well, we talk a lot about it, Kite, but in this field, it's amazing how Claywood is able to take a baseball field that's immaculate, turning it into a football stadium. And then turn right around, new sod. Don't forget about motocross. Well, the, <laughs> yeah, tractor pull, motocross, you name it. But this place is absolutely beautiful. And uh, Claywood and his crew do not want to forget the great crew that he has to help manicure what people say the best infield in all of baseball. So Jet Lowry should like it, his first year playing here at the Coliseum. How could you not? Absolutely. So Straley has finished the warm-up tosses. Angel Pagan steps in the box and... We're about set to go. Don't know exactly what each manager is thinking, but you probably want to get your regulars a couple at bats. Well, I think your uh, statement during the open, get through the game and stay healthy and be healthy at the end and, and start the regular season Monday for both clubs. Both will enjoy tomorrow, Easter Sunday off. One and one Angel Pecan with Scudero. In the on deck circle. Talked about that man, Eric Sogard, in our open. As hot as anybody in the Cactus League. Fly ball to center, hit pretty well. Coco Crisp is going back. Now the settles underneath it right at the warning track. Pagan flies out to deep center, and that's out number one. But every time you see a fly ball, we saw it in San Francisco the first two games. You think, well, in Arizona, it's a home run. Light air. We saw it last weekend. The game we televised in Phoenix, the way the ball was carrying, the wind blowing out. But much different here in the Bay Area. Cooler temperatures. The moisture keeps the ball from really traveling unless it go down the line or you crush it. One out for Marco Scudero. First pitch is down. And in. speaking of the weather, it's... I, Checked it the last couple days. It is supposed to be decent weather Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. Maybe some chance of some rain after that. With the A's, of course, home Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with a day game on Thursday. And then they will leave for Houston after that game on Thursday. So a four game series to open it all up against the Seattle Mariners. Well, they talked about rain today, but it's supposed to be tonight, maybe tomorrow for Easter Sunday. So the Easter eggs on the Easter egg hunt might be get a little wet, but uh, hope not. You can do it. <laughs> it's your your great coloring job, it might get soaked up. <laughs> now that's a fun time. Yeah, fun time for the Easter egg hunts. But you know the new collective bargaining agreement. Uh, one of the stipulations is the day before the opener has to be off. They can't even work out. The Mariners can because their off day I think was on Friday. But uh, the A's, since they're playing right until through today, will have tomorrow off, and they will completely enjoy the day without coming to the yard. Well, it may so not sound like a huge deal, but and it is Easter, of course. But guys, you got to get settled in a little bit exactly. in your in your living quarters, exactly. and that was the reason that it was put in place. That would hit up the middle softly. Sogard backhands the throw to first it is not quite in time. Sogard with the nice play off balance throw. So he really could not get a lot on the throw and Scudero just beat it. Well, remember Jed Lowry new to the club. Eric Sogard has been here, but you watch this play. Look how close Lowry is. How about a flip to Lowry 
And you might see that with a couple of guys playing and familiar with the other guy. But Lowry got out of the way, so guard off balance. And a ball that was in the dirt probably allowed Scudero to beat it out. But you talk about injuries, that's how a player gets hurt. Yeah. Running and jumping to the bag as Scudero did. A nice play by Sogard to almost get Marco Scudero. So here's Hunter Pence. But you know, you got to realize that you know, the players, they don't live here in the offseason. Right. So during the season, you got to get a house, apartment, right. whatever, and it. it Got to get things set up a little bit. Well, the great thing about the Bay Bridge series, at least both clubs come back to the Bay Area and they have at yeah. least three days. And in case of the Giants are probably leaving what tomorrow? Tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, tomorrow for the uh, opener against the, the Dodgers in LA. The A's, of course, forget to stay here. We're talking to AJ Griffin, you know, getting his place moving and coming back and forth because Steve Busenich had the truck loaded mm -hmm. with all equipment and personal items coming from Arizona, but players have to. Come and pick it up, move it into their place. So it is nice to get settled before the opener and the four days in the Bay Area will allow them to do that. Two and two now to Hunter Pence, hitting in the third spot with Posey in the on deck circle. So as we said in our open, what the A's would like to have, perfect scenario today, is Straley go five, Cologne go four. We'll see if that. Happens. Swing and a miss. Fastball from Straley strikes out Hunter Pence for out number two. A good fastball after a slider that got to the second strike and watch Pence with his stance and then opens up, flies open with the hips. And with a fastball outside, no chance to reach it, but always aggressive. Hunter Pence. No contact there. Good strike by Straley. And by the way, we uh, thank and especially thank Mr. David Renetti, Vice President of Stadium Operations, for his nice work getting us a better working yeah. surface here in the TV booth. He made some improvements yeah. to our area where Ray and I work, helped us out. We requested it, and when you asked Mr. Renetti to do something, he takes care of it. So. And in about a year, but that's all right, you know. I mean, right. David said it came to him, went around the circle, came right back to him, <laughs> and he let us know during spring training he got it done. Now, we could explain what was done, and it wouldn't sound like a big deal to our viewers back home, but the little things have helped. There's Mike, he's showing it right now. Little more working space. See, yeah. just just like yeah. that. That That is a big deal to an announcer. Am I right, right? right? Absolutely. And so the they teams. added it. And we could see the field. And we've moved actually closer to the field, if that makes any sense. And we used to, as we sat here, look out. We could see the home plate umpire, and that was about it. Yeah. And now we've moved closer to the edge, and now we can see the first row of seats, which it's nice. It's helped us, so well, we appreciate it, that. It will help our backs also that we don't have to keep leaning over. <laughs> but it is. It, it is. A, it's a this. nice, nice improvement. Yeah. It is our office, right? So That's we appreciate it. exactly right. Second home, just like the players, and, and for them to have an off day and not be able to come to the park. That's uh, what they'll experience tomorrow. That would skied. It, it'll be just below us. And you know Steve Lucinich and Brian Davis and Ruben down in the clubhouse they provide such great food for a player not to be able to come to the park at all on a day that hurts <laughs> because the food is so great. So full count and scooter roll will take off. Driven to right. Reddick goes back. He's going to have room. He's got it side retired. So Scudero is stranded after the one out single. A's come to bat. When we come back, bottom of the first.
Giants did not score in the top of the first. Coco Crisp will lead off for the Athletics, followed by Jaso, Reddick, Cespedes, Lowry, Moss, Donaldson, Smith, and Sogar. Could that be the opening night lineup? I'd say yes, Kai. Okay? Not I'd out say of the It's question. a very good chance. Ryan Vogelsong, 14-game winner for the Giants last year on the mound for San Francisco to start today, and he has been very good. He's traveled the world, but has found a home with San Francisco, and he has been very important for them, especially in postseason. So Coco Chris steps in against Vogelsong. Coco last year, 259, 25 doubles, 7 triples, 11 home runs. He stole 39 bases. Missed some time, played in 120 games. He was good when it counted. Absolutely. Down the stretch. First pitch, fastball, first strike. And Coco on these exhibition games of the Bay Bridge Series, he has played. He played in the outfield in San Francisco. He's back again today. Cespedes is the DH. There is the... Third baseman Arias expecting a bunt. Outfield shifted slightly toward left center field. But if, if you don't, if you're a regular and you don't play today, so no game, you don't play Saturday, then you don't play Sunday, and then play Monday night. Doesn't sound like a long time, but it can be. That's why Kurt Young, Bob Melvin got the relievers in last night because typically they would pitch the day. We're having a day off, but you're right because if they don't pitch today after pitching yesterday, we'll see what happens with Balfour, uh, Doolittle, Chris Resop came into the game, and Ryan Cook. Those four relievers came in late. As a matter of fact, uh, Cook came in and threw one pitch to get an out. He expected to get a little bit more than that. One pitch, a bunt attempt, and it was caught and it was done. So they could pitch today anyway and still have tomorrow off to get ready for Monday night. They sit right field for Coco Crisp. So leadoff man aboard for the Athletics, and that'll bring up John Jaso. Such a good hitter, trying to go inside with the pitch, and look how quick Coco is with no stride typically, and with the open hole between first and second, left-handed hitter, fouled the ball back, found the hole in the right field. And Coco Crisp does that. He gets on base. Now John Jaso, if he hits second, which there's a possibility he might when he does play, he opens up the hole between first and second for him to pull the ball, but also makes it a little bit more difficult for the catcher to see Coco take off. Now, how long, if you're Coco Chris, do you keep that hole there by not attempting to steal? That's a great point because there are times that you want to leave it, depending on the pitcher, that first pitch to Jay, so he could not pull it, took it, which is a good idea, but I think any time a hitter, left-handed hitter, has that hole, you want to give it to him as long as possible. There's a base hit left field, so Jaso shoots one the other way. So good start for the A's here in the bottom of the first. And simply there, you take what you're given. The first pitch fastball, sinking him way, tailing away from the left-hander. Gets a backdoor breaking pitch. Hesitates, watch the slight hesitation with the front foot. And then keeps the bat back and offers it out to left field with a nice hit. There is the plan of the foot, but he kept his bat back, even though he had already committed. Got the foot down, bat was back, and... Hit it perfectly to the opposite field. He can hit. And so can Derek Norris. I mean, that's a nice combination to have, both of them. So that'll bring up Reddick. Reddick ready to go. Hit a home run off a left-hander on Thursday in San Francisco. A good left-hander, Jeremy Affelt. So that was good to see. What's great about that game, he hit a couple of balls to the left side, staying back, and it's something he's been trying all spring, as we talked about last weekend. And, and then all of a sudden, there's the fastball that comes in, inner half of the plate. And he has turned into a very smart hitter. Cespedes in the on deck circle. Cespedes, the designated hitter today. Outfield straight away. Crawford trying to hold Coco Crisp close, and we've seen Coco a lot. Still third, and he's good at it. 
previous pitch, I think he might have been thinking about stealing. That's when Vogelsong had the inside move and Coco had to get back quickly. Crawford was not there to take the throw. That one drops down and away. Here's the home run on Thursday night. A little fastball. Yep. In. Yeah. Try to get inside and he said, "Try to sneak it in there, and I'll get you." Not quite in the water, but over the fence nonetheless, and a three-run home run. As we always do here, exhibition game, we. We'll talk to some of the players. We're going to talk to Chili Davis as well in the bottom of the third inning. He's hitting coach. Chili will talk us through some of the at bats of the guys. So we'll look forward to that. Matter of fact, we might be just lay out, just let him talk. He is that good. A big swing by Reddick on a changeup, and he. Cued it foul, so the count two and two with Chris Bet second. Jay, so at first they had back to back singles to start the game, start the bottom of the first. Vogel saw a deliberate worker, as most pitchers are with men on base. That's a little flare behind third, and that is going to drop, and it's fair right on the line. It's picked up by Blanco. He throws it home. It's well late, and Reddick drops one just fair, and it's one to nothing. Athletics. That may have hit chalk. It did. I think it did exactly because it just was slicing and slicing and came straight down. And Josh Reddick with an excellent job of base running by Coco Chris. Look at Chris at the top of the screen. He could see exactly what was happening, that nobody was going to get to the ball. And once it hit and hit fair, he was rounding third. And no chance for Bonco to throw him out because the great read by Coco. This is great. That's, that's just great base running. He knows. I think, first of all, he knew that it was not going to be caught. And that's the most important thing. You don't want to get doubled off. On a ball, especially with nobody out, but Coco read it perfectly, saw it was not going to be caught, and once it landed in fair territory, gives the A's a first run. So Reddick, RBI hit here, Cespedes. Very good spring for Cespedes. And he skies this one. Foul territory, but playable, and Crawford, the shortstop, is there, and he's got it. So Cespedes. Said, I'm going to take a big rip at that first pitch. And he popped out. So that's out number one. Quick look at the defense for the Giants. Blanco, Pagan, Pence in the outfield. Arias, Crawford, Scudero, Belt around the infield with Kiros doing the catching. So here is Jed Lowry, switch hitting shortstop, hitting in the fifth spot. And Lowry will open the season as the everyday shortstop. Of course, Rosales is on the disabled list, and Hiro Nakajima is not officially on the disabled list, but it certainly looks like that's where he is headed. We'll have to wait and see. Well, the A's will have to get down to their 25 man roster following today's game. And if Nakajima can't play, and he hasn't played since he injured his hamstring earlier in the week, it's going to be difficult for him to be ready. And really enables him to take the time to get ready, if that is the case, to be able to get the hamstring injury healed, which is not that easy in itself. Tough, tough part of the body to try to get well. That's right. Yours still isn't healed, is it? Uh, no, it's been a long time, too, <laughs> as a matter of fact. <laughs> Here is the uh, this was the X-ray. You see him come up a little bit short there, and that was the hamstring injury called time, and could be brought off the field, taken off the field, and uh, it's been nursing it since. One-one pitch is fouled back. It's amazing how a hamst bad hamstring will affect the knee. <laughs> That's it, what mine has done. It, it's not like you heard it last year. Uh, no, as a matter of fact. <laughs> 
Give How us a year on that hamstring How injury. How long has it been? How about 1974? There you go. So, a little bit of a slow healer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Putting all the pressure on Dr. Workman, trying to figure it out how to make it better. <laughs> He's team orthopedist. One and two to Lowry Moss in the uh, next circle. Fastball in a little bit on Lowry. He fouls it back. Well, Kev, it's great to see a nice turnout today for this uh, final game of the exhibition and the Bay Bridge series. 40 and 42,000 over in San Francisco the first two games. Steve Finale talking about in excess of 30,000 a day here at the Coliseum and kind of reminiscent of the division series and the end of the season when people got to the seats early. A lot of tailgating out of the parking lot today, but in their seats. And Monday night, it is going to be loud and jamming. Crowd is packed for Monday night. Arius, a couple steps into foul territory. He's got it for out number two. Well, I don't know what the attendance was last year at the Bay Bridge game, exhibition game here in Oakland. But my guess it was probably 15,000 somewhere in there. So it could be somewhere close to 30 today. So that in itself, hopefully, is. A sign of things to come. Absolutely. And they announced that Monday night sold out. They announced that on Thursday. And it's, uh, I, we have talked about it. We mentioned last weekend, and we've been talking all spring about people in the past have been able to wait around. Oh, I get a ticket when I want to. You can't do that. If you want to watch your team play, and I say your team, and that's what people should be doing, watching the A's, and then whoever's coming in, pick your game and get the tickets. Belt has it. Side retired. A's get a run on three hits. One nothing. Athletics after one from the Coliseum. Go Glove, and that's for the Go Glove of your own. Friday, April the 12th, 10,000 fans will receive a Josh Reddick foam Gold Glove, courtesy of Comcast Sportsnet California, when the A's outfielder has presented his 2012 Rawlings Gold Glove Award before the A's host the Tigers. For more information, and there it is, that's that's the Josh Reddick Gold Glove. You can get yours in, uh, for information, tickets, call 877-493-BALL or visit OaklandAthletics.com slash tickets. Win a Gold Glove, grow up here. That's... I didn't. I couldn't because we couldn't even have facial hair when I won mine. <laughs> that was that was pre Oakland A seventy two. That's right. Now if that was after that, then the A's kind of opened up baseball for facial hair. Uh huh. Changed baseball forever. Forever. I gotta see that movie again. Well, we're gonna grow to like the Josh Reddick beard. Yeah. Well, you better. Because he has no, he told us last Sunday. Remember, I asked him about the race. It, it, it's not going anywhere. No. 
because typically a player struggles and if you play 162 games and you don't struggle it's a miracle and last year when he struggled all of a sudden he's clean shaven he said hide the razors he's not going to do it right. we might see him you know having to braid it like they do for hair because it gets so long he may be stepping mm -hmm. on it the beard may have its own twitter account at some point Who knows? <laughs> it already <laughs> probably already does because yeah. he's a tweeter is that right. what you call him? Yep. 3 1 pitch and Belt lines when the center for hit. Looked like a breaking ball and Belt reached for it a little yeah. bit. It was off speed. I enabled him. Uh, he was trying to pull the off speed, but fortunate for him, ball kept tailing away and ended up hitting it up the middle. But this is, you try to pull that pitch, usually it's a ground ball, but it stayed up. And that's the mistake that Strayton made by Gabe, keeping the ball up in the zone. Now the Giants think Brandon Belt is on his way to becoming a very, very good hitter. Looks like that may be the case. Well, this uh, he's the Giants version of Eric Sogard. Yeah. It's hot as spring that he has had. He's been very aggressive all spring, his belt, just like Sogard. Here's Crawford. Donaldson comes in, a couple steps onto the grass. See the pitch count up on the scoreboard. And that's new this year, which the pitch count has become such a big thing in around baseball. Whether you like it or not, it is kind of part of the numbers process now when it comes to baseball. So you see on our screen, we'll give you the miles per hour and then the pitch total. It's amazing. And a pitching coach, every pitching coach has a counter, a clicker, which counts, has it in his hand. Kurt Young has it. And as soon as uh, a pitch is made, click, click, click. I mean, he doesn't trust the scoreboard, doesn't trust anything, nope. doesn't have the ability to see the, the TV. They said not supposed to be in the dugouts, but you can watch the scoreboard as well. But they want to keep it for their own record. Runner goes, and that ball is lined to left field. Smith's going back. Couple steps, he's got it. So that's out number one with Belt returning to first. One of the problems the pitcher can have, he concentrates so much on throwing strikes that at times they forget about a base runner. And that's why a lot of the throw overs and pitch outs come from the bench. But you still, as a pitcher, have to give your good look, good move, and not just assume that if you're not given the sign to throw over, Cannot assume he's not going to be running. Belt, not your prototypical base stealer, but he probably saw something, gave him a chance to run. Now here's Blanco playing left field. Breaking ball in for a strike. So we talked about Straley starting to be the fifth game of the season, which will be Friday in Houston. And that brings up Bartolo Colon, Ray, where Bartolo has to finish the suspension, which has five games left. So after that game on Friday, that Straley will pitch, Colon will be eligible to come off. Mm -hmm. And it is possible that, well, Colon will then go into rotation, but it is possible that Colon may pitch on Saturday, the sixth, sixth game of the game. year. Yeah. So instead of waiting a turn through the rotation right. again, just put him in there. Give everybody an extra day's rest. Well, you want to keep it's a him possibility. Exactly. And you want to keep him sharp if that's the case, because remember there's an off day Monday. Exactly. Otherwise, so, Cologne so, yeah, doesn't pitch for long, quite a while. Longer and longer. So it, it does allow him by pitching today. And if it is next Saturday, it's, it's possible. It's right on schedule. So that's something those two guys will be making determination. Kurt Young, the pitching coach, skipper Bob Melvin, and figure out how they're going to do it. But Dan Straley. Pretty much known that he's the odd man out to start the season. But he also knows that it's unlikely that a full season will take place without a starter or somebody getting injured. You'd hope it doesn't happen. But it's rare for five starters to pitch an entire season without having to bring somebody up. Yeah, it it doesn't happen 
And if you get close to doing it, you've probably had a very, very good year. I think the Reds last year didn't Brian Price and his pitchers, uh, the starters, pretty much go yeah, all year. I think so. And Bob Melvin had the case in Seattle. Those are probably the last two or the only two you can remember. A dribbler toward Moss who tags Blanco for the second half. I think the, it's the Giants won it all last year, and I think their starters started 160 of the 162, which is about as good as you're going to get. It also means you got five good starters, I and mean, the A's certainly have that. But in the case of the Giants, by playing in the World Series, and they played the extra month, the full extra month, and Dave Rigetti, any time a team pitches the World Series or plays in the World Series, you start thinking about slowing them down during the spring, sure. and especially this year because of the lengthy spring training. Bogosong was outstanding for the well, he has been ever since he joined the club. Especially in postseason. So I, you're saying a, a pitching coach, I mean, you have to take that into consideration. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember talking to Joe Madden when they went to the World Series. He said he almost told the guys, don't even show up. I'm not going to pitch you anyway. Because you don't want to wear them out in spring training, especially after pitching seven months versus six. Little flare, shallow center field. Crisp will get there. Side retired. Giant strand belt. So we're going to the bottom of the second inning from the Coliseum. One nothing athletics. On ice as the Sharks extended homestand continues. He'll play the Phoenix Coyotes. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. with Sharks pregame live. Complete Sharks coverage every night at Sportsnet Central and CSNCalifornia.com. The home of Sharks hockey is Comcast Sportsnet. Sharks currently sitting in the seventh spot in the Western Conference playoff picture. And they've been sliding in and out of that final spot, or the final two spots. For a while now, so they're trying to hold on and get into the postseason in the NHL. Busy time in the Bay Area, all Boy. sports. Starting last fall. If you are a sports fan and you live in the Bay Area, you really have nothing to complain about. <laughs> Except maybe the Raiders, unfortunately. The Raiders are really scuffling, but. Just work your way around the other sports. You know what you can complain about, Kite? Maybe with all those sports, if you're a great sports fan, fanatic, you may complain that you don't make enough money to attend all the events you want to attend. Think all about it. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a nonstop sporting event. But the great thing, and we talked about it before, if you can't attend, you can see it right here in Comcast Sports Net in California, yep. Comcast Sports Net Bay Area. I mean, we'll cover them all. I mean, you know the baseball story. Both teams very good. Yep. 49ers go to the Super Bowl. Warriors are going to make the yeah. postseason. They have a nice team. Stanford went to the Rose Bowl and won the Rose Bowl. I mean, you yeah. just you have so much 
so many good sports things going on. It's, it's a good time. Giants will try to turn two out at second. Crawford totally turns it and dug out by Belt. Not an easy turn by the shortstop Crawford, but he was able to do it with a little help from his first baseman. Well, Josh Donaldson got down very quickly as the ball was hit slowly off the bat of Seth Smith. And watch out quickly. Scudero turns and gives a quick throw, but Josh Donaldson got down very quickly. He's going to get some high fives because he almost enabled Seth Smith to beat it out and maybe even throw the ball in the dugout to get an extra base. But it is an exhibition game, and you it's hard to play the game not play the game the right way because you just can't flip the switch. So what Donaldson did there is something you expect during the season. And he's starting it in the final exhibition game of this 2013. First pitch to Sogar is inside. Sogar. Done a nice job in the first two games of this series. 471 overall. What did Chili Davis say? I want to swing like that. <laughs> and when a guy who hit 350 career home That's runs right. says, I want to swing like that, well, then you have impressed yeah. people. The thing that Chili could do, he could do from both sides. That's true. Switch hitter. Change up, and Sogard missed it. One and two. Sogard has 18 hits in his last 33 at bats. He started out well and then got really hot. Outfield straight away and shallow for Sogard. Eric Sogard, Brandon Belt, the Kansas City Royals, who have won 25 games. They all had one thing in common. Monday, they're all zeros. Doesn't matter what has been done, and they realize it, and that's what happens in baseball. So strike three called on the outside corner. Charles Theodore Davis will join us when we come back. One nothing. Athletic. Top of the third from the O.Co Coliseum. Ray Fossey, Glenn Kuyper. We're getting ready. Exhibition season. Was that for Jack us you were well. waving to? Yeah, Jack's here. He said, I want to see an exhibition game. It's great. He keeps waving. Tell him you got to work. <laughs> you can't keep looking down behind the first base dugout and follow the game on the field. It's all right. Jack will be up here before you know it. Yes, he will. He, he knows that it's, well, he knows the third inning hot dogs, and he <laughs> just happens to magically appear. <laughs> they get smarter as they get older. 0 oh, and 2 to Guillermo Quiros. Straley. A little bit down low, 1 and 2. I believe 
Our good friend Chili Davis is hooked up. Chili, you hear us okay? I can hear you clear. All right. Well, Try thanks for clear. joining us. We appreciate it. Are you jonesing to get this exhibition season over with? <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, I'm just enjoying it. You know, guys are swinging well, and uh, you know, I just want them to carry it into the season. Don't change a thing. Shelly, how, how important has been playing in San Francisco two games under the lights, the big stadium, and then coming back a day game here, big crowd on hand, just to get your players acclimated to Major League Baseball at this level, getting a chance to play here? Yeah, it's nice to have this little Bay Series here. You know, we had a night game at home in uh, Phoenix. Lights are good, spring. weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it reminded me of my AAA days. I forgot how bad those lights were. <laughs> They're the same yeah. lights when you played there. That's yeah, exactly. a long time ago, Chili. I couldn't even see the outfielders, you know. <laughs> but it's good to, to get into a, a big league stadium and, and play under big league lights, you know, just to get the eyes uh, acclimated to that. Coco on the move near the wall and he can't get it up against the wall and Pagan is going to try for third and the relay will not be made and Angel Pagan has a triple. Jenny that ball carried very well to left center off the left hander's bat but how do you talk to the players when they hit balls in spring training especially in Arizona and it carries out of the park in many cases and they're caught here whether it's San Francisco here Coco not quite able to get to this ball because he kept slicing away but the difference in the elements I mean you experienced that in your spring training days in regular season how do you talk to players that, that that they realize that maybe some of the balls that are hit in Arizona are not going to do the same here yeah you know these guys we played here last year so they know this ballpark I think most of them work off feel anyway you know we're not very result oriented you know, we're just trying to stay in the now and get a pitch we can hit and just barrel it up. And, you know, whatever happens after that happens. I mean, you know, guys with power, they've gotten the power to hit the ball out of this ballpark anywhere. Yeah. You know, I, can, I, I, I tell you what, you know, going to, to the San Francisco Stadium, beautiful ballpark. But to, to my eye as a hitter, you know, I, I look in the right center, and, and that's one area I'm staying away from as a hitter. And I don't necessarily like to. To go to ballparks where you got to say, okay, I'm going to stay away from this area. You know, I like to be able to hit the ball anywhere and know that I've got a chance to do some damage with it. This ballpark, on the other hand, is more symmetrical. You know, um, I think when you look at it from a hitter standpoint, there's no part of this ballpark that says, you know, I can't hit it out of here. I mean, you know, 388, 400, 330, 367 in the gaps. You know, uh, as far as uh, from a hitter's viewpoint, I, I like the, the way this ballpark sets up. How do you stay away from an area that you just talked about in San Francisco, the triples alleys they call it? As a hitter, how do you stay away from a particular area? Well, you know, uh, I know you're good and you <laughs> can do it, but, but you know, a lot of guys can't do that. I don't, I don't know if you can actually purposely try to stay away from it, but in your mind, you're thinking, you know, when you hit a ball out there, it's like, oh, no, not there. You know? But it is triple valley if you can run. You know, I, I didn't run that well later on in my career, so you know that could be a long single. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, even you would get at least a double. <laughs> great breaking ball from Straley. The 0-2 pitch, now, and now the infield can move back. What a great pitch, huh? Thanks. Yeah, he's, he's throwing the ball with more commitment today. You know. So Hunter Penn steps in. We're visiting with Chili Davis, the hitting coach for the Athletics. So Chili, even though you're the hitting coach for the Athletics, when the other team is hitting, do you watch the other hitters? Oh yeah. What yeah. do you, what do you look for with the other team's hitters? I, you know, I look at things that the good hitters do, and the similarity in that hitter and maybe someone that I have on my my team in our team and. You know, think that you know. Sometimes I look at it and say, you know what? That's kind of how you know JD looks, and, and and he's not doing that little move that Hunter's doing. You know. Does and anybody look like Hunter Pence in your mind? No, no. He, <laughs> you know, I, I tell you what, though, he's just natural. Yes, he's you know, he's, he's aggressive. Natural, natural. Yeah, and, and I, I actually stood by him during B, after BP, and he's a lot taller than I thought he was. You know, he's not a little guy. But he's natural. He does everything naturally, and sometimes that's better than, you know, most of the times to me, it's better than being mechanical or too mechanical. Yeah. 
But he uh, even his practice swing is a little bit funky. You know? I mean, it's, it's well, I don't watch that part. I kind of turn away. The on deck swing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Inside with pretty good fastball from Straley, so two and one the count. Shelly, you just got a chance to see Marco Scudero strike out, taking a called third strike with the runner third base. What do you teach your hitters when the infield comes in? I know you practice it during BP and work on things, but what do you teach with a runner in third less than two outs? It's a shot toward Coco. Chris, stick around. And we'll continue our conversation with Chili Davis when we come back. Straley works out of a jam. Our boy straight. will have the top of their order crisp Jaso and Reddick and we'll continue our conversation with Chili Davis who now with the ace coming to bat Chili can get a little more definitive on his own hitter starting with Coco crisp Chili when do you know whether Coco's locked in or not well you know Coco is a field hitter and I don't really bother Coco much uh, he knows what he's doing up there he's a veteran you know, uh, he knows what his things should feel like. He knows when he's trying to do too much and when he's, you know, getting outside of being Coco, you know. But he works on his swing. He takes BP very seriously. He takes the whole game seriously. And, uh, you know, for him, if he stays within himself, which is a cliche, but I don't like to use him. But if he stays Coco, you know, he's going to spray the ball around. His power is going to show up. And he's going to, you know, he's not a chaser. You know, he gets pitches to hit and he's going to barrel them up. And, and, and just try to keep it as simple as possible. That's what he does. How about the fact that he barely, if ever, strides? Does that allow him? I mean, he's got amazing power when he doesn't stride and uses the whole field as he did in the first of bat, pulling a pitch inside. But what do you see in, in basically a no stride, yet he is able to generate the power that he does? Well, you know, he's got a very small load. But the beauty about that is that he lets the ball travel. Mm -hmm. he, he gives himself enough time to recognize pitches. He trusts his hands. He knows his hands are quick enough to catch up to fastballs, and he's, he doesn't. He has no reason to cheat. So he's loaded right now. Nice little soft stride, boom. <laughs> you know, that's a boom, all right. And, and, and you know, throwing him off speed, up and in the zone is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, to get back to your question about. Uh, the, the, the runner at third situation because that's a good question um, you know it's, 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 it's a situation that if you make an out you want to make a productive out yeah it's no different than any other at bat you still got to get a pitch that you can drive to the outfield so you know uh, pitch discipline is really important um, to go up there and just try to hit a sack fly I don't like that. I'm still, you know, get a good pitch, try to drive it to the outfield. You're trying to pick that run up with a base hit first, not a sack fly. Mm -hmm. If you get under the ball a little bit, you got a sack fly. Now, the only thing is, for a right-hander, 
I don't want to get in the pull mode because the only place I don't want to hit that ball is the third base. Right. Because that's not going to score the run. And if you look at the game uh, from a, a true perspective, most fly balls that are hit are going to be hit from alley to alley. You know, mm -hmm. the big part of the field. And that's where we focus, staying to the big part of the field. Get a pitch, I can drive to the big part of the field. You know, and, and, and if you hit it on the ground, a short or second, and they're playing back, there's your RBI. But, right. You know, first and foremost, we're going to treat it as a, a regular at bat. The biggest difference is pitch selection is very important and stay to the big part of the field. Okay, but the one thing that he says about sack fly, and Chili, maybe you can talk about the season in which you had that you did not have one sack fly, and there was a reason for that. Maybe you could explain why. I mean, can you imagine having the type of season he did without a sack fly? Explain how you did that. Well, you know, I, I think that whole thing started in, in 92 with, uh, with the Twins, you know, playing with Kirby Puckett. And, you know, I would be at the plate. He, he, he might be at third base or whatever. And, you know, he would scream out, hey, Chili, come on, dog. We don't need no stinking stack fly. Drive in with a knock. You know, and the, it just kind of made you think, you know, okay, base hit. Base hit. But, you know, I start, I, I learned to start from trying to get a base hit, get a pitch I can get a base hit with, and whatever happens after that happens. But I'm just trying to get a hit. I'm not trying to, the, I don't want the easy way out. I don't work on sack flies in BP. I work on hitting line drives. So I need to get a pitch I can hit a line drive with. So you need the pitcher. You know what he's trying to do. He's going to try to sink and do everything to get you to hit the ball on the ground, hit, you, hit the ball where you don't want it, where he wants you to hit it. If I know that, then I need to get him to elevate pitches. And I need to be disciplined enough to wait for a pitch elevated in the zone that I can get to easy and drive to the out to the big part of the field to the outfield. Three and two now to John Jaso. Chili, what do you like about John Jaso, especially hitting in the two hole? <laughs> I was thinking about that today. Catcher hitting in two hole. <laughs> you know. You were a yeah. catcher. You ever do that? Uh, no, not as a catcher. <laughs> <laughs> I let off as an outfielder, but you know, JJ is a good hitter. You know, he's got a good eye at the plate. You know, he's, he, he's not a guy that chases a lot. You know, he's going to make you throw pitches to him, and he handles the bat very well. So that's probably why Bo Mellis took him in the two hole because he, you know, is a pretty good two hole hitter. You know, Chelly, we were talking earlier before you maybe talk about uh, Josh Reddick. Talk about Jason hitting second with Coco getting on as he did in the first inning. That hole that's created between first and second. How much does a pitcher try to keep away from a pitch where you could, a left hander can pull it? But how important is it for a left hander to maybe say, okay, here's a huge hole. If I get a base hit, I can get first and third. What does a hitter try to do in those situations? Well, as a left hander, if you're trying to hit that hole, once again, it starts with the pitch. You got to get a pitch mm -hmm. you can hit that hole with. What I like about that mindset is that it makes you aggressive to the ball. And a lot of times if you have power and you get the pitch, you're going to drive that ball. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what the guy out there is trying to do, you know, runner at first, you know, double play situation. You know, he's basically going to try to stay down and away from you, try to get you to beat that ball in the ground and produce a double play. You know, like I said before, if, if I know what he's trying to do to me, then what I need to do is to get him to elevate that pitch, get it closer to me. Something I can pull and be aggressive to it, you know. So Coco, good base running, gets back, tags up, and goes to third on the long fly ball by Reddick. Well, that is two great jobs by uh, Coco Chris reading the base hit by Reddick on the first inning, and then this time he went halfway, realized it was going to be caught by Blanco, went back and tagged, and now first and third, and pretty much know the ball is not going to be thrown to third to allow the runner from first to go to second. So Coco alertly gets over to third base where a knock instead of a sack fly can get him in or a pass ball <laughs> yes well and, you know this situation right. eliminates a lot of pitches with pitchers now they don't want to bounce it that's a good point you know so when you get runners at third i mean now you know hey i don't want to give them a run so mm -hmm. i need to be up and over the zone a little more you know so here's a situation where Seth needs to get a pitch up and out over the plate and work from Xfinity to Stanley. Xfinity <laughs> 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 by State Farm. <laughs> First pitch is inside. Trying to time up. What's the biggest 
difference from Cespedes Chile right now to where he was last year when you had him. I think just having that year under his belt. You know, um, he's more confident. I think last year earlier in the season he probably came out and trying to do a little too much. He calmed down and became just a very good hitter throughout the rest of the year. Now, you know, he knows he's a big leader. You know what I mean? And uh, boom. There's a shot. Block go back at the wall. That baby is gone. Cespedes homers again. A three-run shot. See, that's what happens, you know, with the breaking ball in that situation. Yeah. If you're trying to it's take the fast, <laughs> you're trying to hit the fastball, the big part of the field, and they hang that breaking yeah. ball, you're going to be right on it. But Chelly, the amazing thing about he hit a curveball off of Lincecum about 470 in Scottsdale. He had a changeup off of Lincecum in San Francisco, crushed that one. How much better has he become? An off-speed breaking ball hitter. They look at him saying he's a big fastball hitter. But you make a mistake, he can do that. How much, how great is he as an off-speed hitter? Well, uh, I tell you what, he's a good fastball hitter, yeah. and they all know it. Don't throw him the same breaking ball twice. <laughs> do not do it. Yeah. Because if you sees it once and he sees it a second time, he's not going to miss it. But a year ago, he wasn't even supposed to be hitting that pitch, right? They said, oh, no, he's never no. going to hit a breaking ball or an off-speed pitch. No, those hands. Oh. <laughs> Just keep those yeah. hands healthy. It's right. dangerous. It's dangerous. But you made an interesting point. He believes he's a big leaguer. Explain that. Well, he's got a year under his belt. He had success last year. You know, he knows what guys are going to try to do to him. This is the second time around. He's seen most of these guys more than once. You know, so, you know, he's in a, a little comfort zone here now. Um, you know, and, and I think, you know, from what he did last year, from the beginning of the year, to the end of the year, he, he gained a lot of discipline at the plate. You know, yeah, he understands that, hey, I don't have to hit the home run every time I go up. You know, he drove in runs with base hits last year, key base hits. I mean, he's just, he's just a, he's developing into a true hitter, you know, and, you know, his potential is, I, I can't even explain it. He, you know, he's got such a potential as a young player. He's going to be dangerous. He is dangerous. <laughs> How's your Spanish with him and uh, talking? I know Prieto is there, but you know Spanish as well. How much does that help you as a hitting coach with he, a guy who does not really speak that much English? He speaks English. I know. He does. <laughs> no, but he, he know, understands it. Between uh, him and Ariel, you know, they're helping me with my Spanish, and, <laughs> and it does help a lot. It does help a lot to be able to communicate with him in a lot of ways, even joking around, you know, to understand, you know, when he's in his moods and. You know what's on his mind and what he's thinking. Um, you know the off season hurt my Spanish, my ability to speak Spanish because I'm not speaking the you know Spanish speaking people a lot. So I've got to catch up again this year. I think his bat will catch up with a lot of it. <laughs> well, you know it's amazing. You were talking about get a knock with a runner at third and less than two outs. Well, that was first and third, runner at third. And you just said that. I mean, it couldn't have been more perfect, especially for a power hitter, somebody that, as you said, you just want to see him make contact, and he did more than that. Just barrel it up. You know, this all starts with the pitch you swing at. You know, you got to get, got to get him to make a mistake and elevate, because he's not trying to elevate. He's trying to get ground balls there in that situation, especially. And right. He made a mistake, and he paid for it. Bit outside to Brandon Moss. Cespedes with a three run homer here in the third inning to give the A's a four to nothing lead. Mm. <laughs> that one ripped down the right field line and it's just fine. But Jelly, we must commend you for uh, your work with Brandon Moss and I know you'd like to defer to what the player has done, but I still say what you did to him by saying be yourself. And when you saw that pitch, you knew that's what was going to happen, right? Yeah, you know, the weird thing today, he was telling me in BP that he felt a little two piece, a little disconnected. And just watching him in BP, uh, you, you know, when you talk about two piece swing, you feel like he's tried, land, and then swing. Mm -hmm. He wasn't necessarily doing that. He, his hands were getting away from his body. 
he wasn't staying connected with his hands. And you know, I said, after BP, we'll go in the cage and do some work. Well, I walked in the cage, and he was in there. Hmm. And the drill that I wanted him to do, he was already doing it, wow. which was which was great. You know, and, and and he has his own drills, and it was nice to know that he went to that drill because that's the perfect drill to get him back to the field he wanted to. So I'm just watching to see if you know. Um, his, his body language will tell you how he feels up there. It's pretty confident right now. Exactly. 3 2 pitch. Sky towards center hit pretty well. Pagan going back. Still going back. Now he's under. Makes the catch. Side retired. Chili, thanks for joining us. Uh, enjoy Easter, and we'll see you on Monday night, all right? Thank you. Same to you guys. All right. So Cespedes with a three run homer. He has hurt the Giants in the exhibition season. He's lead four to nothing. Top of the fourth inning from the Coliseum. Wrapping up this exhibition season. On a beautiful day. Sun is a bit intermediate, but it's a nice day. Pitch hitter for the Giants, Chad Godan. Chad Godan will be telling his grandkids, you know, one day I was playing for the Giants and I pinched hit for Buster Posey right. after he just signed this monster contract. <laughs> He took really? one AB really? yeah. and they got to pinch hit for him. They said, no, that's it. One AB and that's enough. So I think Bruce Boach is kind of showing what's going to happen today with his starters. Yeah. <laughs> Chad Godin has made the Giants right. roster. So we know Chad from his time with the Athletics did a good job with the A. So congratulations to Chad Godin. He'll be the long man in the Giants bullpen. Well, and maybe he's pinch hitting because maybe. Bruce Bochy thinks that as a long man, he might go to the lineup at least one time. He'll get to swing maybe the bat. Maybe he wants to see yeah. if he can hit. And he probably saw the one for 40 and realizes he can't. He wanted to see it for himself. <laughs> <laughs> one and two. Not a bad swing there by Chad Goldie. Well, typically, relievers do not get a chance to swing the bat, even the National League, where they do not avoid uh, the designated hitter. I think Bruce Boach would like to have Buster Posey healthy. He had a DH in the day for probably a reason. Saturday, April the 27th, the A's will celebrate the 40th anniversary of their 1973 World Series championship. 10,000 fans will receive that man right there. Reggie Jackson's bobblehead presented by Pepsi. Reggie Jackson, Raleigh Finger, Sal Bano, Joe Rudy. Many members are scheduled to attend along with a special pregame ceremony. For more information and tickets, call 877-493-BALL or visit OaklandAthletics.com slash tickets. How's Reggie looking there? It's a good one. Yeah, that's a nice ball. He's got the sweet, sun, the sweet glasses yeah, on. Looks just like Reggie. He's got the Puma spikes. 
But how about this? Ra <laughs> Monty Moore bobblehead. Got a Monty Moore up here as well. Recent vice president, of, vice president of uh, broadcasting, brought that in, and Monty, I mean, looks great. To Look the broadcast at booth. <laughs> Look at He's calling a Reggie home run. <laughs> That's it. It's a dinger. Now, Betty. It so, is a dinger. So that's, you know, there's bobbleheads, <laughs> and then there's Hall of Famer bobbleheads, and you know what? That yeah. makes a big difference. It does, yeah. Reggie, yeah. it looks, it's his swing. Oh yeah, that's when he hit three consecutive home runs in a different uniform. But he also, in '73, hit a huge one here at the Coliseum in Game Seven. Yes, he did. Yeah, big. One. After missing '72, right? That's he right. did not play in the '72 World Series. Well, he kind of felt like. Me a little bit because he missed 72 sure. World Series and said, Oh, they just won it. And I got traded prior to 73, and we both got to experience another championship. So the Reggie Jackson bobblehead giveaway. It is a good one. You know, when Monty Moore comes up for the reunion and Monty's going to be here, his wife Dion, I think we're going to have to ask him if this jacket actually was that color. Because I think. It was a maroon and white jacket. Sweet not the jacket. green and gold. Whatever color it was. But Delaire said it looks like the one you wore for uh, the throwback game. <laughs> I still got it. <laughs> Every time I open up my closet, I see it and it, I cringe. Jumps out at you. Yeah. We're looking forward to seeing all the guys from 73. And of course, Monty, who called those games, will be here. Flip to left in. That's going to drop for a hit. Speaking of great announcers, of course, Monty Moore. Today, as you came to the ballpark, they had a full highlight, an hour highlight show on the 1973 now, World Series, which is great. I mean, you see, you know, even though it's video you've seen so many times, it's still great. But Kurt Gowdy, yeah. Boy, is that great? I mean, it's just if for me, it's like that reminds you of being a kid. It's the name or it's the voice you. I remember hearing as a kid watching World Series, and it was kind of cool because you just—you don't even have to look up; just listening yeah. to him talk brings back great memories. He did the '70 All-Star Game yeah. highlights, and basically during that period of time, and they would do highlight tapes of uh, of the World Series. You can't run them entirely, although there are some that do. But uh, running the highlights narrated by the great. Kurt it's just it's it's that voice, please, that voice recognition. Robert. Yeah, the, the ones you don't like you said, you don't even have to Newman. look up. Oh, no, you, you just know it's no. Kurt Gatt. Pinch runner is in for Crawford and somebody. Nick Newton. Oh, he had a big game last night. So Newton for Crawford. Blocko the hitter. There's a shot to right. That's a base hit. Well, as we mentioned again in the open, and I'm sure Dan's really thinking a little bit about it. Got two quick outs. Pitcher pinch inning for the number one catcher, and then a ground ball, and then back to back singles. I'm talking no, about it because it's so important for a pitcher to know that he's got a chance for a quick inning. You get the first two two outs with minimal pitches, and then the inning prolongs. You, and you have a four run lead. And you just need to get back in the dugout as quickly as possible. Don't give the opposition an opportunity, at least get them to think that they can come back in the game. Here's Arias, who hit a fly ball to center field to end the second inning. Just a bit low. Pitch count, that was number 62 for Straley. Did a great job last inning, running third and one out. Strikeout and a line drive by Pence, but big strikeout of Scooter. Another off speed pitch, that one stays way inside. 2 0 the count. So interesting to hear from Chili Davis. Had a great job with the club. Yeah. That's important at times for. Hitting coach, somebody that's doing the game to have a baseball card, and he's got a big one. Yeah. Arias is retired by Donaldson. The Giants strand a pair. Bottom of the fourth inning. <laughs> Reggie's watching. So is Bonnie Moore. <laughs> Four nothing. A's.
coverage of the Xfinity Friday Family Pack presented by Xfinity and supported by the Contra Costa Times. Every Friday home game, you can get four plaza level tickets, four Coliseum hot dogs, four medium Pepsis, and four bags of peanuts, and it's all for just $50. What a deal. Tickets are limited, so act fast. For more information and tickets, go to OaklandAthletics.com slash Friday. Donaldson to lead it off. He aims with a four to nothing lead. Three of those coming on the Cespedes three run homer. Vogelson still out there for the Giants. So he's closing in on 50 pitches. Donaldson, Smith, and Sogard. Bottom three for the Athletics. Of course, it'll be Brett Anderson on. Monday night opposed by Felix Hernandez and then on Tuesday Jared Parker and Sashi Iwakuma who pitched well for the Mariners last year Wednesday Tommy Malone and Joe Saunders couple of left-handers and then Thursday AJ Griffin and Brandon Morrow who is a rookie who made the Seattle Mariners rotation pitch very well in spring training and they liked him he's one of their better prospects you know, you, you mentioned that, and you look around baseball as teams are getting down to the 25 man roster to start the regular season. And the unfortunate loss for the A's, Travis Black, who's very versatile, can do so many things. And you'd have to think that with the way he pitched last season as a starter and as a reliever, that he would hook on with somebody. The A's, of course, hopeful that, in a sense, he doesn't because he might be back to AAA where he would be available if something should happen to one of the starters or relievers. Donaldson pops out to belt. So Blackley designated for assignment. Derek Barton designated for assignment. So it looks like the, for lack of a better phrase, the Derek Barton era. He's been here for a long time, up and down, but looks like that has probably come to an end. Ten days the club has to, to do something, trade, whatever. But I guess uh, you get the point that you clear waivers, then you can't accept AAA. You start looking at your best then you where it's going to happen. So one Aussie. <laughs> We're down to one. Down to one. Had three last year at one time. Short amount of time. Jordan Alberto was yeah. optioned to Triple A, so he will start the season there. Very high in the ballpark. Pence comes in. There were more players on the plane from Phoenix on Wednesday. Yeah. Because they wanted to have these three exhibition games against the Giants of Bay Bridge series to finally determine the, the roster and give everybody a chance to play. And some of the moves have been made prior to today, but by the end of the day, yeah, sure, the players, and I tell you, the Sacramento Rivercats, I think they open next Thursday at home. They're going to have a great club because the players who don't make this team will be going to Sacramento pretty much, and that's. Uh, Going to create another successful season for the River Cats just up the freeway on 80. There's one bullpen spot yeah. open, and it's between Figueroa, Okajima, a couple of lefties, Scribner, Mike Ekstrom, a couple of righties. And again, A's have announced that about 30 minutes after the conclusion of today's game, they will make. The final decisions and announce the 25 man roster. So we will not know that in the time we are on the air, but that is basically what it comes down to as far as the pitching staff goes. Good inning for Vogel Song. We are on to the fifth. Four nothing athletics.
Gage with a 4 nothing lead over the Giants, and we're joined downstairs by Jared Parker. Jared, thanks for joining us. Are you set and ready to go for Tuesday night, and how long have you been thinking about that start? I am. You know, it's been a long spring, I think, with the, the WBC going on. We, we're happy to, you know, get the season going on, and I think, you know, we're all ready. Great season for you last year, Jared, but I have to ask you, a year ago at this time, how different was it for you in spring training compared to your spring this season? It's a lot different. You know, I've been able to kind of get ready at a little bit slower pace and, you know, be a little bit more comfortable, but still at the same time just prepare for, you know, whatever level it is. And, you know, this year it's going to be in the big leagues. But Jared, 181 innings last year and then 12 more innings in the postseason. A lot of talk about boy that that's a lot for him. Is he getting tired? But you said no, I, I never really felt tired. Uh, but when the season was finally over, in. how long did you take off before you started throwing again? And did you take some extra time because of all those innings? Yeah, I definitely did. You know, I, I gave my body a, a pretty good break and I didn't start throwing until the, uh, the first of the year. And, you know, I was able to kind of build into it a little bit slower this year. And, you know, obviously last year I never really felt tired. But, you know, looking back, it was a pretty long year for me. It's amazing what adrenaline does, huh? Especially yeah, in great. postseason. <laughs> You know, Jared, I, I have to say that in watching your changeup, we always talk about lefties having great changeups, but you've got as good a right-handed changeup I've ever seen. When, when you're trying to get that working to perfection, how do you get started in the season to the point where you feel very comfortable? And obviously it's a main pitch for you, but, but when do you feel that you have it working for you? Um, the biggest key for me is to throw it just like I do my fastball, and I think that's... You know, when I find myself getting off a little bit or get, you know, getting away from it, it's something that's a, it's a pretty easy fix, and it's something where I'm able to, you know, work on it in the bullpen or play catch with it and be able to get it back pretty quick. Now, last year at this time, you had kind of struggled with some control issues in spring training. You started in Sacramento. Uh, how much nicer is it, and how much easier is it, getting ready? knowing you're going to be in a big league rotation knowing exactly when you're going to start your first game it's different but you know it's great at the same time i think last spring i was maybe trying to press a little bit too much and you know be too fine and you know after i was sent to triple a you know i just started pitching to the big part of the plate and you know it's something i've carried over to you know the the season last year and you know this spring as well I've always been curious how did you get the number 11 um it was just a choice, you know, it was never really something I've ever worn and I just chose it because, you know, I thought it was a cool number. It's a great number, but it's a low for a pitcher. I mean, you look at 64 for uh, A.J. Griffin, you look at numbers for pitchers are usually higher. I mean, that's just a number that you've liked. Is that pretty much it? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I ever really liked it. It's just something that I just kind of <laughs> fell on and, I, you know, I, the real story is I, I wore it on a you know a hockey video game with my created player, so I carried it over to the, the season, and it was something that kind of worked, and it was different, so I you know I enjoyed it. It's amazing how we just find out the real story, the real thing that happened. That's great. That's uh, but I mean it's just unusual to see a, a low Nine. number for a pitcher, but it's working well for you. But but what about the rest of your pitches? And I think you talked one time with a shoulder injury surgery that that you had to develop the changeup, which is great. But what about your other pitches? How many have you incorporated in now? Versus just your main change up in fastball. Um, I'm throwing all four. You know, this spring I've been putting a lot of work in to throw my curveball and, you know, bringing it back. I hadn't thrown it a whole lot after elbow surgery, and I was able to, you know, put my slider to work early this year and not really worry about anything, you know, health wise and feeling pretty strong. And being able to have all four pitches going into the year is, you know, it's exciting for me. And all the comments about the great hook in spring training, that has to make you feel pretty good. Yeah, it's good. You know, yeah. I think. Uh, it's another weapon, you know, I can take in, and if I don't have my slider one day and I have my curveball, it's great. One and one the count to Marco Scudero. Make it one and two. So you have you studied the new Seattle Mariners lineup? Certainly a, a much different lineup than the one last year. Yeah, um, I haven't studied it a whole lot, but, you know, we, we've seen them a pretty good amount in spring, and, you know, I was able to watch them, and, you know, I think, being able to watch Brett from the left side, he, you know, he's uh, he's going to attack him and he's going to go at him. It's going to give me a pretty good idea and, uh, you know, be able to watch him and make a pretty good game plan myself. How much are you looking forward to Monday night, the opener lining up? You, you won't be pitching. You'll be able to line up on them. But just see the excitement based on what happened last postseason where you pitched so well. And then all of a sudden you show up at opening night. You get to experience actually walking out on the line for the first time. Yeah, it'll be my first opening yeah. day uh, in the big leagues. So I think I'm excited. And, you know, I think. 
the fans are going to be here and you know big numbers and I think you know they're as excited as we are and we're ready to go. Coco on the move he's not going to get it drops into right center field two out hit for Scooter. Well Jared thanks for joining us and we certainly wish you all the luck in the world not only Tuesday night but the entire season we're looking for big things. Thank you guys. All right. So Jared Parker about 35 starts. That'd be, that'd be great wouldn't it. Let's see 35 times five. It's more than 162, <laughs> I think. Are you are you are you including the postseason? Oh yeah. Attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. So Straley had 76 pitches. Well, the so guy Cologne starts to get loose. Yeah, and Bartolo getting rid. The guy standing behind him, Darren Bush. He is the new bullpen coach for the Athletics, and uh, a big credit to Darren Bush, Sacramento Rivercats last season. We mentioned him briefly last weekend in Arizona in our telecast, but he is. Help these catchers unbelievably. And watching Derek Norris throw last night, threw out a base runner, yeah. almost threw out another one. And Darren Bush, a former catcher, and now the bullpen coach working with the catchers, but also getting the relievers ready to come in the game. So we welcome Darren Bush in the green and gold. His opening night coming up on Monday as well, just like Jared Parker. One and one the count to Pence. The hit by Scudero was hit number six. Both teams with six hits, but of course the big hit, Cespedes, a three run homer. Good breaking ball, Pence. Legs buckled just a little bit. Now Scudero's hit a two out hit, but his strikeout in the third by Straley when the runner at third base was. Probably the biggest out of the game for Dan Strait is a big pitch. And Pence chases a pitch well out of the strike zone. That is strikeout number five for Dan Straley. A hit and a runner left. Bottom of the fifth coming up. A's with a four nothing lead. Here at the official online shop of the Oakland A's with the largest selection of authentic gear, including clubhouse caps, t shirts, jerseys, sweatshirts, and more. Get set for the season at the official source, the OaklandAthletics.com shop. That's a good one. A lot of A's merchandise around, and uh, there's the A's fan is wearing the, the jersey, the alternate gold jersey, the t shirt. And they're watching their Oakland A's leading four to nothing over the Giants. Trying to win the Bay Bridge Trophy today. Taking two or three it's from the Giants. Trophy. Yeah. It's like those spring training cigar band rings for winning world, <laughs> spring training world championships, huh? Chris Young pinch hitting for Coco Crisp. Chris Young will get a couple of at bats. Jay So in the on deck circle, and then Reddick. So top of the order, bottom of the fifth, four nothing eighth. 
Pitch number 60 from Vogelsong as he has his final start and he comes up and in and it hits Young. So Young. Aboard, he seems to be okay, and that's good news. Well, everybody knows that young lady, Susan Slusher, who is the first woman president of the Baseball Writers Association of America, and her mother well, Joyce is a huge fan, big fan of Oakland A's baseball. And Joyce is down in the Monterey Peninsula, and we'd like to send along best wishes to her. And uh, she gets to see her daughter, Susan Slusher, who is the president of the Baseball Writers Association. So Joyce. Hope you're doing well, and uh, we appreciate you being an Oakland A's fan for a long time, and continue to be that because it's Oakland A's baseball, and she had enjoyed last season as much as we did. Right? If you're a big fan, so hopefully we can make her feel a little bit better. Absolutely. Well, she listens and she watches, yes, so she you know she she pays attention to everything we say. So we have to. And Susan's going to write it, so we better be. Careful. I was going to say, does she read the newspaper? <laughs> well, you know that. You know. <laughs> 0 oh, 1 to Jason, who has singled, walked, and scored a run. You know, Cap, I'm glad we do what we do. The writers today, what they have to do with uh, the blogs, the yeah. tweets, yeah. the writing the stories, and my, it's amazing how much they have to do. Yeah, you're writing your story as the game goes on. That's what Susan but has done. You have to yeah. tweet yeah. when something happens. And if you don't, the guy next to you has already done it. Yeah. Got keep, all those keep a blog. Got all the followers or the or the tweets. So sure. you got to keep the followers up to date. Yeah, it's, it's a much different dynamic yeah. than it was 15, 20 years ago. I still like to read the newspaper in the morning, but you're just not getting anything that you don't know. It. Sure. I mean, you're just sort of you know what you're reading, but I still like. It. Yeah, that's that's great. I like to read it. I like to. What well, a Connor Crow and CC Times. And then of course the uh, I say the USA Today because uh, the Chronicle and the CC Times. Sure. Susan is a beat writer for the San Francisco Chronicle. But you know what's going to be happening USA Today coming out the first part of the week. It's going to be that back section. It's going to have every salary of payrolls of all teams in Major League Baseball. You know I've been looking for that. It's not out yet. And I, I, I went to get a USA Today yesterday because you started to read about salaries yeah. and yeah. a rod more than the Astros so and all right. that. So I said, you know what? I bet it's in there today, and it wasn't. So I'm thinking Monday, Monday. or Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Monday the start of the season. Well, you like to have that in your notebook, and so do yeah. I. And it is interesting. Well, you, you know, you could look and say, well, he's available. Well, he's too costly. Sure. <laughs> you know, so. I mean, <laughs> listen, baseball is all about numbers, and unfortunately. Yeah. People's salary and team's payroll right. is now part of the baseball conversation. It's just the way it is. Well, and, and what you were talking about with the Astros, who the A's will see actually next weekend, their payroll is one of the lowest in all of baseball. Young runs. Jaso skies one. Shallow left. Out is made. Looks like Cole Gillespie is now out in left field. Blanco is done for the day. In depth sports news for the Bay Area fan. Go deep with Sports Set Center. It's brought to you by ATT UVerse. Coming up this evening at 6 p.m., it'll be over on our sister station, Comcast Sports Net Bay Area. Henry Wolpert is live from right next door, Oracle Arena with the Warriors. Brody Brazil is live from the Shark Tank. And lots of reaction from this A's and Giants game and all the roster moves that will be coming up. So, Ahmed Fareed and John Henry Smith will host, and we'd certainly like to welcome Ahmed Fareed. To Comcast Sports right. Net. Terrific anchor. Came from the MLB network. So it's nice to have him aboard. Well, we do get all of our news from the Sports Net Center. You know, They're good. Casey Pratt and They're good. CSN .com. Yep. Casey's very good. Casey got to get home to see his bride and it's it's gonna be a dad yeah, soon. It's gonna be about a month, so gonna tighten it up, Casey. He was, he was happy. I mean, of all times to have the longest spring training in the history of baseball, and your <laughs> wife's expecting a baby, and you're not there. Uh, he does a very good job. Showed up at the Comcast Sportsnet California dinner in his great shirt. He was working because he had to go all the way from Goodyear to Scottsdale. So he was dressed appropriately. So we're talking about the, you know, the payrolls and that type of thing. But how about this week? Verlander, yeah. seven years, 180 million. 
which Posey happened yesterday. 167 million and Adam Wainwright earlier this week 97 million extension signed by those guys. That went up the middle scooter on the back end flips it and it's over the head of Newton and everybody safe. Uh huh. We're just just waiting for that. Is that panic? Scudero, yeah, panic, Joe yeah. panic, excuse me. And you remember when Jamile Weeks would do that? And I asked Mike Gallego, when are you going to say something? He said, when he does that. <laughs> Instead of putting the ball in your hand and flipping it, your glove is not going to do the same as your right hand, your bare hand will do. I mean, it looks great if it's successful, but it looks horrible if that happens. That should have been an out. He, he did not have to do that. No, he didn't. That's what, it, and they never do. That's the problem. And you're, you're only going to get one. Yeah. So just take your time, get yep. the ball out of your glove, flip it nicely to the shortstop because highlight is not a very good <laughs> part of the game in baseball. <laughs> and that's similar to what happens in highlight. So everybody's safe, and here's Cespedes. So Verlander, what did you think? Seven years, 180 million. So he has signed through 2019, and it's the richest contract for a pitcher. Until Clayton history. Kershaw signs no, his he's next at, at the end of the season, and he's going to be oh. 200 million. Well, you look at what Verlander did, and and more power to him. He said at the beginning of this of the year, not the season, but the beginning of January, he said, "Yeah, it'd be nice to be the first 200 million dollar pitcher." Coincidentally, Felix Fernandez signed for 175, and Justin Verlander after him, five million more. Not a coincidence either, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> exactly. So that's what Clayton Kershaw. He said, "Wait a minute. You think Felix Fernandez and Justin Verlander are better than me? And so you got to give me at least 181." Yep. So no, it's going to be the highest. Remember at one time, the one million dollar contract was the top. Now remember when Ricky Henderson signed his? I think it was a three-year, three million a year. And then the next day, Kirby Puckett signed for one million more or something. So it, it just they spin off of the, the previous contract. Well, Verlander's average salary, as Suspect oh. strikes out, is twenty-five million a year. Yeah. So it, it right. is the way it is. I mean, it tells you how healthy I think Major League Baseball is. There's a lot of money going around, and the players are getting. Case of Buster Posey. From his standpoint, he's set for life. Yeah. But from the Giants, they knew that you win a batting championship, you MVP, a couple of world championships, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Yep. So they probably made a good deal for them over the length of the contract if, assuming he stays healthy as a catcher. Sure. And as a catcher, you never know. But I thought when you started hearing that they were discussing, I thought he would get more. I know that sounds crazy. No, you're yeah, right. But, but the average right. salary for him per year through the length of his contract is 18.5 million. Mm -hmm. Ridiculously a, amount of money, but I guess my point is doesn't seem ridiculous for a guy like Posey. And over time. Over time. Yeah. Yeah. So four nothing A's is the athletic strand a couple and we're headed to the sixth.
A's with a four to nothing lead over the Giants and we're excited to talk to Grant Balfour who's downstairs and Grant how's the knee feel are you 100 percent and ready to roll yeah I'm ready to rock and roll it's uh it's feeling pretty good it uh, came around nicely and um yeah I'm looking forward to Monday for sure yeah I'm are you, are you pitch, you're not pitching today are you uh I hope not uh, <laughs> well, I know you pitched last night. No, no, I'm not, oh, throwing, I'm not throwing today. Well, the only reason I ask because yeah. your bleacher creatures in right field, and you know they're all excited about you coming back. And yeah, you know, uh, kind of explain that. I mean, how great does it feel when you come in? Last year, remember they turned off all the lights. And I thought they had a power outage, and then all of a sudden you came in. How yeah, did that all start? I forgot. The, uh, I thought they forgot to pay the bill around here, <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, it just started getting crazy. And uh, yeah, they, they're great fans here. Uh, definitely, they get they get wild, and uh, you know they got the whole stadium into it now. So you know, I love it. Grant, you were terrific last year, especially down the stretch, and you pitched a lot. How much down the stretch were you relying on just straight adrenaline? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when it gets to the the grind, you know, it's 162 games, and uh, it's it's tough. Uh, mentally, physically, you know, your body wears down, but uh, you know, we, we knew what was at stake and we knew we had to win and uh, you know, I wasn't going to take a day off. I want to be out there every day. So that's what I did. You know, game 162, you guys beat the Rangers. You had a, a healthy lead. Typically yeah. a closer doesn't come to the game and somehow the phone just didn't work in the bullpen and you <laughs> got up. How important was it yeah. for you? I mean, how, how badly did you want to be on the mound for that final game, especially with all that your team did and you especially? Yeah, you know, I pitched uh, four days before that and yep. to get to the point where we're at, we clinched and, and whatnot. And uh, to get to that point where we could win the American League, you know, I wanted to be out there on the mound. Um, you know, might sound a little selfish, I don't know, but, you know, I've been out there all year in that situation and uh, that's where I wanted to be. And, yeah, we got a little bit of a lead there that last inning. Uh, I was already kind of hot and uh, <laughs> Bob Mill had enough. someone else, I had Jim Miller up. I uh, said, uh, <laughs> I just looked down there and said, hey. <laughs> This is my game, so he sat Jim down. <laughs> That's great. That's all good. Well, we're going to take a look at the final out. And it was fun for us. I can imagine how much fun it was for you. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's a lot of build up and then uh, yeah, a lot of emotions. So, the fans, the organization, and, uh, you know, all the players here. We had a really good time last year. And, uh, you know, we, we know what's at stake again this year. It's another year. It's a whole new ball game. So uh, we, we're going to go out there and do it again. Grant, you know, we, we talked about what you did in the four days and before that you pitched. But talk about your other guys and, and, and Doolittle and Cook, guys that just pitched and pitched and pitched down the stretch. And, you know, young kids that never pitched that much before. But the, the adrenaline and just wanting to be out there, how were you guys able to do it? You, you talked about yourself, but what about the rest of the guys? How much did you look up to what they were able to do? Yeah, I say, uh, you know, if you don't know any better, then uh, you don't know any different. Right? <laughs> so, uh, hey, just keep, just keep going. Uh, but no, you know, they're awesome. You know, it, uh, you know, it takes, it takes every guy on the team here to, to put us in that position. You know, and all the guys that uh, contributed last year to get to that point to where we could be in that situation to, uh, to go out there and win the American League West. And uh, you know, you got the guys like uh, Sean and, and Cookie and, and all the other guys in the bullpen. They did a fantastic job. You know, I think. Uh, I think we finished second in the league in the ERA in the bullpen. So, uh, you know, it was, it was outstanding. Sean, er, thank you very much for joining us, Grant. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you Monday night, all right? All right. Thanks very much, guys. All right. Take the care. closer, Grant Balfour, has been our guest.
SNCalifornia.com. Right now is A's insider Casey Pratt and 95.7 The Game's Guy Haberman predict the A's final roster. They're doing it right now. With opening day right around the corner, Casey and Guy break down who might be in and who might be out for opening night. CSN California, your interactive home for Bay Area sports. Nate Fryman. First pitch swinging against Jose Maharas flies out. Casey was saying hi to me. So, Casey. Hi, Casey. I'm glad he said hi to you because if he's predicting roster. Yeah, see, you predict Third something like that Number and 20. you put the wrong guy yeah. and he makes the club and you said, ah, oh, he's not going to make the club. How are you going to deal with him? Best <laughs> to stay away. That's why we're not doing the predicting. <laughs> Unless you have some insider information as the Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area insider. We just lay out the scenarios. Right. And one of those scenarios, Ray, on a serious note, Com the gentleman who just hit, Nate Fryman. Yeah. Rule five, which means if he does not stay on the A's roster the entire season, he has to be offered back to, which would be the Padres, I believe. Yeah. So that's a significant decision. If Fryman makes it, he makes it as an infielder, right. and a, a subsequent middle infielder would not make it. Well, and that could change with Nakajima goes on the same. Who knows? Yeah, yeah there's I mean, a lot, a lot of moving parts, but Rosales is already there. Yeah. So we'll see with Nate Fryman. Powerful right-handed bat. I know the A's like the idea of having a powerful right-handed bat. He's never played above double A. So we'll see. Remember one time there were about six second base vying for one or two spots. Jamal Weeks was optioned to triple A. Marino is, is a young man who has shown that he can play. And uh, Bob Melvin likes him too. He likes him. And, and of course, Scott Sizemore missed all of last season with a knee injury. So guard. Adam Rosales going on the DL with an costal strain. And Nakajima possibly going. That that helps as far as the other players are concerned. I mean, uh, the other players uh, about the front office and making the decision because those guys are already on the DL. Donaldson swings and misses. So we'll make it as simple as possible. There's one spot in the bullpen. And then and then the do you keep Nate Fryman? Or do you keep another middle infielder? Well, well I, I think what happened with the couple of guys who on the DL bought some time for the club no, to make right. a decision on Fryman. Because Rosales was gonna make it. Yeah, absolutely. He was make the team. absolutely. Uh, he, he was definitely on the team. It had his best spring ever. And finally, was healthy, and unfortunately, ended up not being healthy. But no, he definitely was on the club, and maybe as a starting second baseman. Who knows? Uh, considering what was happening, but but you know, we were talking earlier to Jared Parker, the fact that he has made the club, and we mentioned him four or five relievers and trying to make a decision. You and I probably got a good night's sleep. I don't know last night that those guys got a very good night's sleep. Well, it'd be hard. You, I mean. You don't know where you're going to live. Exactly. You don't know. Yeah. Should I get an apartment here? I mean, those are all. Well, it's, I mean, it's part of the deal. It's it's as a player wearing a double ear flap at AAA, or you get to wear a single flap here <laughs> in Major League Baseball. But, you know, another guy, too, that uh, very conscientious, and that's the skipper, Bob Melvin, because as a manager, you have to be the one, although decisions might come from elsewhere, but you're involved in those decisions, you have to be the one to tell that player. And he takes it personally, and he knows what it's been like to go into the manager's office and be told, "Hey, you're not making the club. You know, go down, try hard, and hopefully bring you back." So, I think from a manager standpoint, the opening night after all the decisions have been made has to be as relaxing for him. Although I don't think he's ever relaxed. He is so intent on winning every game, regardless. But to get through this final cut has to be kind of a load off his shoulders to finally say, "Now we can play baseball." So Maharas with a three up, three down inning, and we're on to the seven for nothing athletics.
Reddick's Gold Glove presentation the night before. The Oakland Angels will celebrate Earth Day by giving away Redwood Tree seedlings to 10,000 fans after the 105 p.m. game against the Detroit Tigers at Redwood. Giveaway is sponsored by FSC Certified Mendocino Redwood and the Home Depot. Proud to be part of the A's on co ongoing commitment to being environmentally responsible. For more information and tickets, call 877-493-BALL or visit oaklandathletics.com slash tickets. Cologne out for his second inning of work. He had a three up, three down, sixth inning with a couple of strikeouts. And that one hit toward the right side. Fryman, a nice play, flips to Cologne, and Cologne was off the bag. Blanco's safe. You know, the six foot eight frame made a nice play at first base. When you're that tall, long way to go to get to the ground. But Nate Fryman, pinch hitting, staying in first base, and great play. PFP, the pitchers covering. And for him, Bartolo Cologne trying to catch the ball, find the back at the same time. But nice effort, nice play by. Fryman, oh, yes. the flip to Bartolo. Bartolo very quick <laughs> getting over to the bag, wasn't he? He, he was fine. He just tried to skid it right across. <laughs> he tried to sell it. Yeah, he's one of those NFL wide receivers trying to drag the toe. So it's going to be an air. On who? It's not going to be. Oh. Air's going to be on Cologne. <laughs> well, an assist to Nate Fryman, but that's a tough air. So Blanco is aboard, and here's Arias. First pitch in for a strike. He scored a single run in the first on a Reddick RBI single, and then a Cespedes three on the homer in the third. That's all the scoring in the game. Giants have threatened a couple times, but have not been able to. Push a runner across. Straley ended up going five innings. He threw 80 pitches. So that's about what the A's were hoping for. From Straley, get through five and get to 80 or 85 pitches. So he's ready to go for his start Friday in Houston. Three trips to Houston, Ray. Get used to it. Yeah. We'll be doing it every year. That's going to get through in the left field. Arias gets his first hit. So a little action for the Giants here in the seventh inning. Heck, the A's will play the Astros six of the first 16 Number games Number this season. The first four series, four against the Mariners, and then you go to Houston, you have an off day, and you go to Anaheim. So Anaheim will be. A week from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Home to play the Tigers. So it's always fun playing the Angels, and they're going to be good this year. No doubt about that. And, of course, the Tigers. Tigers go to the World Series last year, and this year they add Torrey Hunter. And let's not forget what they're really doing is they're adding Victor Martinez. Absolutely. And that's two very good veteran hitters. So... The Tigers will be very, very good as well. And thanks to the injury, the season ending surgery, Victor Martinez, they were able to sign Prince Field. Otherwise, Prince is not even on the Tigers yeah. because Cabrera plays at first and uh, Victor Martinez at DH. That one is drilled to left, and Guillermo Quiros has just hit a three run homer off Bartolo Colon, and just like that, it's four to three. The Giants have actually kicked around the idea of at least early on keeping three catchers and the third would be Kiros. That probably didn't hurt his chances. Uh, one thing about Bartolo Colon that we saw last season and we're seeing again today. He's a fastball machine last inning. Struck out a couple throwing the fastball. He did it this inning and looked at the location. They'll tie it above and Kiros knew. Sound a great off his bat little flip of the bat. Added a little flare to the three run home run. He knew it was gone and it made it easily. And Torres hits one on the nose, but Reddick comes in and makes a nice running catch. And that's why it's important for a pitcher who throws pretty much nothing but fastballs to have the movement. And that's what was impressive with Cologne last year. 
that he was able to use just the fastball. Change a little bit off the fastball movement off the fastball, but primarily just the fastball and if the location isn't there. He can get hit. His own air not fielding or being able to touch the bag maybe contributed to this inning. Here's Joe Panic, who's in the game at second base. Panicked on that ground ball that was up. He he just did, <laughs> Probably not a great name to have if you're an athlete. He was a number one draft pick, so he must have something more. But we were talking about the Tigers, Ray. Don't forget, Anibal Sanchez, pretty good pitcher. Yeah. They'll have him for the whole season as well. They signed him to a big contract, so they've spent a lot of money. No, they but have it's a good team. It's a really good yeah. team. Doug Fister pitched today in their final exhibition game against Tampa Bay. Merland, of course, leading the pack. Fister is there. And Porcello, they were going to make him a closer. Yeah. They sent the Rondon down. The big guy, hard throwing. Former catcher. But they still have the skipper, Jim Leela, at the helm. He's one of the best. We get to see our old friend Jim Price be coming into town. Former catcher with the Tigers. Longtime broadcaster, Dan Dickerson, and he on radio. So with the different schedule now with just the interleague situation and Strike three call and a good pitch on the inside corner from Colon. I think it's good to see the Tigers early <laughs> because they yeah. get them out of the way. And with the 15 teams in each league now, mm -hmm. as Colon starts a fastball in, brings it back, lower part of the strike zone, and gets strike three. But basically, seeing all other teams outside your division just one time, exactly. home, home and away. And that's that's probably the the, the biggest difference yeah. outside of. In the West, you got a new team, so you're going to go to Houston right. three times, which that's what you do against the teams in your division. You see them three times at home, three times on the road. But as Ray said, the difference is all the other teams, the Central and the East, I think it was four of those ten teams, you would actually go to that city twice. Yes. I think it was four. Now you're just you're going once, they're coming by yeah, your ballpark past, once, yeah. and that's it. So a three run homer for Guillermo Quiros, and it's four to three, seventh inning stretch from the O.Co.
beautiful day at the Coliseum. Baseball back in the Bay Area, which is terrific news. 4-3. A's lead the Giants. A's getting set for their opener on Monday night. Brett Anderson, Felix Hernandez, the... I'm going to call them the new look Seattle Mariners will be in town. Lots of changes, and I think they're going to be a significantly better team. Right? Their offense has been so bad for really about five years now, and they made a lot of changes. They made, to me, he may be 40, 41, but Raul Banya is back to Canada to uh, Seattle. He was there originally, Kansas City. Of course, the Yankees' big home runs last year. Torres, <laughs> little circus act out there, but he did make the catch. It's very difficult to make a basket catch when your back is facing home plate, and I think that's just what happened. And the second Sorry. baseman's name of panic happened right now with our <laughs> <laughs> Torres in center, that is. Yeah, yeah. and uh, tough son, as we all know, here at the Coliseum, center and left field. Sunglasses got turned around. I got it. I got it. You better because there's nobody around. I think I got it. Yeah. Eric Sogard said my spring has been too good. That's supposed to drop in for an extra basis. Jake Dunning is the new pitcher for the Giants, a minor leaguer. Got a good point about the, the Mariners improved, but also the Kansas City Royals, two teams that had tremendous records, successful records in the Cactus League. And of course, all that goes. To zeros on Monday, but the Royals something like four hitters top ten in batting average throughout the uh, spring training. Four hitters, so their offense if they get some pitching or their offense the pitching has been improved. Especially big game James Shields and uh, Santana's there. Guthrie's back. They've got a great bullpen. But I think Seattle the A's will see Monday night King Felix and. Rest of the Mariners, Kendrys Morales, yeah. acquired. Jason Vargas now with uh, the Angels. Morris is back. Panic out. And coming out of nowhere is Blanco, and Blanco ends up making the catch. So maybe the sun, which is now out, obviously, the clouds have slid away. So. Sun is an issue, but the Giants have managed to hold on to both fly balls. But the Mariners, so you brought up Abanez, pretty good veteran hitter still. Yeah. And Mike Morris, who's a pretty good hitter. Yes, he is. And he's going to go to the middle of the lineup. And Kendrys Morales, we've seen a lot of him. So now you add that group with Montero, who is. Looks like he's going to be a pretty good hitter. Kyle Seager. And now, you know, you have the makings of a, of a decent right. middle of the order, which is something that they really have not had. I mean, and, they've been yeah. two, three hitters short. Absolutely. And plus, they move the fences in. And they move the fences in, yeah, which would be interesting to see. King Griffey Jr. might make a comeback once yeah. he sees those fences in. Yeah. Because he moved from safe goal field, or not uh, a kingdom to safe goal field, and the fences were farther back and outdoors. And Ball didn't carry as well. Norris is hitting for Jaso. Noonan, the shortstop. No problem with the sun on that one. And a three up, three down inning for the youngster, Jake Dunning. Eighth inning coming up. A's lead 4 0.
premium today and watch over 150 select spring training games live, plus every regular season game. And since this is the final spring training, let's talk about regular season. You can watch them all live or on demand on over 250 mobile and connected devices. Visit OaklandAthletics.com for details. And folks, that is a great service to have to watch all the games that you want to watch. You probably watched 150 spring training. Now the real season begins. Actually, tomorrow night as Houston will host the Texas Rangers, the first game of the season. I'll be watching. We'll be at Minute Bay Park. Notice all the games back east, like the uh, the Reds will host the Angels at first interleague. I mean, this would be a first ever first game of the season for a team yeah. playing in the interleague and the National League. But they always have the day off following. Remember Cleveland, the brother played back there, would always have the off day the next yeah. day for snow or rain or cold weather. Precautionary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in essence, there are two openers. The one that's scheduled, and oh, by the way, the second one if it's frozen. And there's a frozen fastball to the outside corner, the trailing fastball back to the corner from Bartolo Colon. So after the three-run home run, a couple of strikeouts. He's retired four straight, has Colon. So one out for Belt, 4 3 game. Shot foul. So, Ray, Casey Pratt just sent out a tweet. It said, My hey, Glenn and Ray sign got cut off by the window oh, yeah, pane. Right. On TV, it just read, Hey, Glenn. Yeah, I'll right. have to make it up to Foss. Yeah, he just came in the booth. No, <laughs> he just came in the booth. He just added that. <laughs> He said Ray was on the side. I said, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about you and your bride and, yeah. you know, new baby. And all you do is say, hi, Glenn. Is it is it strange that he asked for a magic marker? <laughs> yeah, Thank right. you. An extension of the uh, the paper? Thank you. But, I, I mean, I'm not the one that should be disappointed. Really, you should be disappointed in Casey for not putting your name. Well, there. Casey saw the TV, saw him on himself on TV and that sign. And as soon as the inning was over, I look up and there's Casey. And he gave me that. He's feeling guilty. He gave me that Sammy Sosa. You don't like. Yeah, that's, that's a yeah, right. you know what? I, I could tell him that that's not going to work with you. <laughs> exactly. There it is. See, tell me what's wrong with that sign, Casey. I don't see any Ray in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he clearly added that. Yeah, right. There's Plus Ray. No it. See how much bigger the sign got? Exactly. Yeah, come on. And the bar. I mean, shoot. You gotta be kid. You gotta know who your friends are. <laughs> That's <laughs> and I know who mine aren't. <laughs> so back to back strikeouts for Bartolo Colon. I think the ace pitchers today have struck out 10. Just the fastball and Bartolo after making the mistake, but that's quality Bartolo Colon fastball there. Did you see the Lyle Overbay contract? Three days and an one day extension, and he made the Yankees. He's a starting first baseman for the Yankees. Released by the Red Sox. I can't wait to see the Yankees opening day in the lineup on Monday. It'll be interesting. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Three up, three down inning for Cologne. Bottom of the eighth. Coming up, A's lead by one.
Friday night, it's the home opener. It's also Magnet Schedule Giveaway. It's brought to you by Farmers Insurance. First 32,000 fans are going to receive the always popular Magnetic Schedule. Again, oh. brought to you by Farmers Insurance. you got to have one of those. And the A's do it right. you got to give it out on opening night because you have to immediately, when you get home, find the best spot to put it so you know what games you want to go to. Okay, if I was in Arizona, I get one haircut before I go, and I can't wait to get back. My barber Rod. Yeah. First thing I walked in, he says, "Where's the schedule?" So I got to see when the A's are playing. I said, "I get a magnetic for you, and you put it in your barber shop." So Rod and Tom out to Danville. And he said, you know, your hair has never been so long. And I said, it was in the 70s, but. Uh, yeah, well, I, yeah. I noticed on a game we did down there. Uh, yeah, you noticed that, huh? It was pushed back yeah. quite a bit, but that's all right. Thought it was time for you to tighten it up that's a little it. bit. You got to do it. But I just didn't try. A long time ago, I went into a barber shop and trusted the person that actually <laughs> they decided to do what they wanted to do. And that made me upset. Put a bowl in your head? Yeah. So I said, I'm done. And I'll never do it again. Blame Looks like Josh Reddick is going to get a CG complete game today. He's fourth at bat. RBI single, fly out, and he reached down an air. He has tomorrow off. You know, speaking of that, what happened, of course, the Tigers coming into town, you mentioned them. But what happened with the Tigers in sweeping their league championship series, the best thing the Giants did was go seven games because they played Monday night. They had their day off before the World Series, so it was like having a normal day off. So players can have one day. And it's okay. You start getting four, five, six off days. The timing goes, everything goes. And we saw Justin Verlander in the division series pitch two games, and he was sharp as uh -huh. everything. Guess the World Series, after having all that time off, yeah. it's it such a difference for him. So ideally, the game is to be played daily. Yeah. Maybe a day off every once in a while. So it's good to see Josh Reddick in there. You mentioned Coco Crisp, three straight in the Bay Bridge series. Getting ready for Monday night. They announced the crowd yet? Yes, they did. 30,266. That's great. That is great. And a beautiful day with the sun coming out, making tough on the outfielders, but the fans enjoying it. So Reddick takes the walk, and there's a good look at the crowd, and most of them have stuck around. Got a good helping of fans from both teams, which always oh, makes yeah. it a good festive atmosphere as long as everybody behaves themselves. We hope that happens. Well, in the interleague for the A's against the Giants this upcoming season is going to be four straight Memorial Day. That is the 27th and 28th here against the Giants, 105, 705, and then the Wednesday, Thursday, 715, 1245 in San Francisco. No two three game series. It's just yep. two two game series with the additional interleague games. Be kind of fun though. Four in a row. Yeah, absolutely. Two and two. Cespedes facing Heath Hembry, who is one of the Giants' top pitching prospects, a reliever. So good challenge here as he faces Cespedes, who had a three-run homer in the third inning. There's Hembry. Good lead by Reddick, and he takes off. He had a huge lead to throw to second base, not nearly in time. So Reddick walks, steals second base. Josh Reddick has slid a little bit late with his headlong dive. Fortunately, able to stop with his leg, grabbing the bag, his foot grabbing the bag, and getting all the dirt. When he slides head first, he's going to get a mouthful and a beard full of dirt. I mean, he's got he's got to be cleaning off his pants and also shaking his beard. So like the count is 0 2 to Cespedes. I like to see that. Got a great jump and stole it easily. He's trying to get an insurance run. Pretty good fastball there. 96 miles an hour, and Cespedes swings and misses. Four seam fastball just right over the top, right down the middle, and Cespedes a big swing. He's just no contact. He was not thinking about hitting the ball to the right side to advance Reddick. He was thinking about bringing him in. You know, we've watched Cespedes now. This will be his second year. We've seen all of his games, Ray. And seen the home runs. And if 
I'm an opposing pitcher. I would not throw him an off-speed pitch. I agree. I mean, he just crushes yeah. anything that's close to a mistake yeah. off-speed. Frank Thomas was like that. Yeah. We sat here all year and went, they just keep doing it, and he keeps whacking them. Well, unfortunately, the, the thought process, catchers and pitchers, is that, and that's why Bartolo Colon is so great, because he throws fastballs. <laughs> But guys say, okay, I've thrown all these fastballs. I better try to throw a slider and you hang it or change up and you hang it. Whack. Curveball. I mean, then that's when the power hitters yeah. are mistake hitters and they do not let many mistakes pass. And I'm not saying that Cespedes can't hit a fastball. Th that, that's not it. He can't. But we've just seen him hit, I mean, it, against the Giants. You said it. He got Lincecum. Two bad off speed pitches. Yeah. Curveball and a change. And up. the one today, a bad changeup out over the plate. And he's just, he's too strong. He's just not going to miss those. Just a bit outside, 93 miles an hour. Two and one the count to Jed Lowry. So Lowry is going the full line today as well at shortstop. I, I had not noticed Jed Lowry using a double ear flap. I mean, a switch hitter, you would think that, you know, some guys do it, but. I think he always has, right? I has remember yeah, him yeah. with the Astros, yeah, and that just, stood out a little bit. Just did not realize that and watch him in Arizona. and wasn't paying that much attention, but now that we have our great monitors on Comcast Sportsnet California, you can look right at him with the close-ups, and you can see the double ear flap. Required by minor leaguers, major league, you can wear just one ear flap, ear flap the protection on the side facing the pitcher, but it makes it simple for Steve Lucinich to have just one helmet if it's a double ear flap. Torres in center. He's got it. And that's out number two. So this is what we're talking about with Cespedes. Now this was Thursday. Now watch this pitch. It's off speed. And it's a mistake. So you change it. Yep. Out. Yep. But up. And crushed. And now watch the one the one today. Same thing. The change up, up and out over the plate. I mean it's just, I mean, look. There it is. It's well, he, almost the same pit. Yeah, and he's so upper body strong. His strength is unbelievable. And, you know, he can start keeping his bat back. And he is so strong that once he gets the full extension, the ball jumps off his back. But even those two pitches, they may have been a little off the plate. Yeah, away. But he's able to Yeah, but yeah. He's, he's so strong and right. he has such great extension. Here's Priman, his second at bat. He had a fly ball to center field in the sixth inning. Priman, six foot eight, two hundred and sixty pounds. Check swing, slowly hit. Noonan, the shortstop in time, side retired. So Reddick is stranded, and we are headed to the ninth. The A's three outs away from a win, and wrapping up the exhibition schedule. Thank you. <laughs>
night as the AL West champion athletics face the Seattle Mariners. Brett Anderson against Felix Hernandez. Full pregame festivities and coverage begins at 6 p.m. It all starts with A's pregame live. Complete A's coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSNCalifornia.com. The home of A's baseball is Comcast Sportsnet. So, Monday night, go to Comcast Sportsnet California at 6 o'clock, and we will have all your coverage. And just stay there all night. So it should be fun. And it's funny, opening night is always very exciting. There's a lot going on. And then when it's over, you take a little bit of a deep breath, and then you really settle in to the long season. Right? And that's a good thing. Swing and a miss by Gregor Blanco. So opening night at the Coliseum. Giants will have a day game against the Dodgers in Los Angeles for their opener. So that's a pretty good day of Bay Area baseball. Lone kicks and the one two pitch. Strike three called, a little delayed call. Cologne will take it. Quinn has had enough. I think he has. <laughs> Got the low strike working today, and Bartolo Colon painted the lower part of the plate and got the strike three call again. So no, a buddy. great comeback, Number great 13. recovery by Bartolo after again giving up a three run home run. He's got seven retired in succession. He's also got six strikeouts in three and a third innings. Australia had five himself. Drops that one in there for a strike to Joaquin Arias. Well, as Bartolo Colo says about every fifth day, today's my happy day. He's happy every fifth day when he's on the mound pitching. So he has to be happy today, especially the way he is finishing. Finished very strongly. See 41 pitches, so he'll get a nice workout and be ready to go whenever the A's decide he will make that first start. No one that guy is pitching on the right, Brett Anderson. Well, the lefty on his right shoulder. Tommy Malone will be in the rotation. Shallow center, and it's going to fall. So the Giants will get the tying run aboard with one out here in the top of the ninth inning. Figueroa, the left hander, is warming up in the athletics bullpen. So here's Kiros, who has really the only big hit in the game for the Giants, a three run homer in the seventh. Side corner, good fastball by Cologne. Bartolo, one of the best right hitters you've seen that can use the two seam fastball inside the lefties, but also he throws it to the right handed hitter's back door. He'll start it outside, bring it to the outside part of the plate, and hitters see it out of the strike zone and they freeze. And if it breaks back sharply as that last one did, comes a strike and they can't do anything with it. Tried it again, but this one stayed a little bit outside. Norris tried to pull it back. Field straight away. Crisp is or young is pretty deep at center. Smith is deep in left. That would bounce. Donaldson charges. Tough out. Goes to second for one. On the first, and that's the ball game. So the game comes to an end on a 5-4-3 double play. So Straley goes five. Cologne goes four, just the way the A's hoped it would work out. 
And the final exhibition game of this 2013 season is an A's win, four to three. Uh, Josh Donaldson charging the ball, short hop, and the throw to second base to Sogard to complete the double play. The amazing thing, the accuracy in which Donaldson, first of all, catches the ball and then a very quick, accurate throw to second base. Sogard clears himself out of the way and completes the double play. So the A's win the Bay Bridge Championship Trophy for 2013 with a win today. But it's been a great way to finish this exhibition. It's been a long spring, but uh, a very good finish for the athletics and especially to play a crisp game. And pick up a win in their finale. And that man's happy. He always likes to win. Bob Miller. So we'll all enjoy Easter tomorrow and be ready to roll on Monday night. 4 3, A's beat the Giants. We'll come back and wrap it up from the Coliseum right after this.